a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Every single word here is very important, so you can read as well. Hallelujah. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, what kind of greeting is this? It might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants uh, forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary asked the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Brothers and sisters, no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Brothers and sisters, last Sunday I was saying that, yes, we do celebrate uh, Christmas. We remember um, that one day uh, Jesus was born. One day Jesus gave her life so that we could have life. I told you last Sunday that Jesus was not born in December. And if he was not born in December, he was not born on December 25th. Amen. If he was born in January or February or whatever, who cares? One day he was born. And then one day he gave his life for us Amen. to get life and life abundantly. Hallelujah. So Jesus was probably born in March. But if the Bible does not talk about it, that means it's not important. Do not miss the point. It's not the birth that is important. But, but, we remember that because we are human, when we remember, we are happy. And then when, when we're happy, we celebrate. You're not going to leave pagans do whatever they want, celebrate Jesus. That's our God. So we're going to celebrate as well. Hallelujah. But, Stay spiritual. Understand the meaning of things. Hallelujah. Mary has been something that is controversial in the Bible. People fight because of the name of Mary. For some, there is, I can say, two groups. One group stick on what the New Testament says about Mary. You remember that the Bible says, she is a young Jewish woman. She was chosen by God to supernaturally conceive and give birth to Jesus. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says she was a member of the group, the first group that was following Jesus everywhere he went. And that group respects Mary but does, and says Mary does not occupy any center stage. When you read the Bible from the beginning to the end, that's what the Bible says. Another group says, no, Mary is everything for us. Without Mary, then our entire spiritual understanding and meaning means zero. Mary has to be prayed to, maybe has to be venerated, maybe everyone has to be a Marian, and you have to to read the rosary or pray the rosary, to do processions, pilgrimages, and all these things that we see on TV. For those people, 
Mary has even titles. She's a heavenly queen. She is the mediator between us and Jesus. She's an advocate. So Mary's titles are almost equivalent to Jesus' titles. This group is mostly composed of uh, Catholics, and um, they believe that Mary, because she is a mother, she can be approached confidently. If you have your problems, you can just go to Mary, and then she will intercede for you. Because if you have done something very wrong, it becomes difficult to confess to God. It's better to go to Mary. And that's where Mary has been worshipped. For this group of people, no Mary, no Jesus. You cannot talk about Jesus if you did not talk about Mary because Mary is the mother of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. When you compare these two groups, um, you will notice that there, there is a huge difference uh, depending on who you're talking to. This person will say no, this person will say yes, and people will fight. That's the reason it's important we go back, we study, we read, and we understand, and we, move, we agree, and we move forward. Hallelujah. Here, we just read that God sent an angel called Gabriel to see Mary. And, Ma and Gabriel tells Mary, you will conceive without a husband. You have to understand the situation here. Mary, the Bible said, we read, had pledged to be jo Joseph's uh, um, wife. In their culture, that means you're already married to Joseph. It's just a matter of time that you both be together. You belong to Joseph. The, no, there won't be any, any guy turning around. It's over. Done. Uh, maybe she had a ring, I don't know, but it's done. But that's the time before, really, she leaves with Joseph. That's the time that Gabriel comes and says, you will be pregnant. My goodness. I wish she could have been pregnant even before, so we don't talk about marriage. But this time is crucial. You cannot be pregnant. Even with Joseph, it's not possible. Coming back to Mary to understand what the Bible says who Mary is, even from her own mouth. The book, the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 10, says that Mary was part of those who Jesus came to seek and to save. There was an expectation that Mary will also be saved, was also uh, waiting for the Savior who was Jesus. Do not be confused here because Mary is the mother of Jesus. That, that does not necessarily mean that Mary was the mother of God, even though Jesus is God. Take what is physical, put, put on one side, and what is spiritual, put on the other side. Amen? Am I connecting here? The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 46 to 47 says, that Mary herself recognized her own need of a savior. If I need a savior, I cannot be the savior. Amen? My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my savior. That's what Luke chapter 1, 46 says. So ver therefore, Mary is the one who gave birth to our Lord Jesus Christ. But... She had no part in Jesus' ministry other than being an observer and being a follower. Mary has never said to Jesus, no, do not do that. I don't want to. Otherwise, I will grant you. It did not, never exist. Mary was following her Savior as everyone else. For sure, Mary was a model of faith. But people we see on TV, people we, uh, I used to be a Catholic, they made her a subject of faith. 
She's a model of faith. Moral, why? At that age, she was probably 14, around 14, 15, when she was told, you will be pregnant, you will do all of this. And it's a huge responsibility. She accepted that. She knew what she was going through. That's the reason I'm saying she was a model of faith. But from there, to make her the subject of faith, it's a totally different uh, story. So we have to be wise. Amen. Few facts uh, quickly here uh, for teaching purposes. First of all, Jesus was born from a virgin, Mary. He had no earthly father. Okay? Joseph was not the father of Jesus. Do we, do we, do we agree? Amen? Amen. Mary does not hold the office of perpetual virginity. She was virgin, and then she gave birth to Jesus. The conception was supernatural. Joseph did not know her at that time. But we know that after that, they lived like a husband and wife. And the book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 3, even give more description about the sons and daughters that Joseph and Mary had after Jesus. We know some of the names, James, Joseph, Jude, Simon. All, the, all of those were the sons and daughters of Joseph and Mary. So this idea that she was a virgin, from the beginning to the end, is not true. Amen? Amen? When Gabriel came and said to Mary, Hell, favored one, the Lord is with you. I know today it's a song, it's even a prayer. Hail Mary. Whatever happened, whatever has said there, be, became a prayer. It's not a prayer, and it should not be a prayer. Mary herself prayed to the Lord. Jesus, that she had the privilege to, to carry. So, it's not right to pray to her. The verse 38 we just read was saying, I am the Lord, I am the Lord's servant. Okay? May your word to me be fulfilled. I know some, in some religions, and probably us too, we do sing, we sing all of these things. It's good. There is nothing wrong about that. There is nothing wrong to sing, especially something that is in the Bible. But this, in no way, no form or shape, is a way to invoke Mary. It's a, it's a way to pray to Mary. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to understand. I am not saying take Mary and then if you, No, that's not what we're saying. We're just saying we have to be educated so we know what we're doing. Yeah. Otherwise, we fall into idolatry. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Mary was not conceived miraculously. Jesus was. Mary was conceived like you and me. So this idea that she was conceived without sin is not true. It's only Jesus. Hallelujah. So Mary and everyone else who has passed and who is waiting the second coming of Jesus is not God, do not have any God's like attribute. Everyone who is dead is waiting for the second coming. That's what the Bible is saying to us. Everyone, including Mary. Hallelujah. So, my point today is just to say that it's very wrong to pray to them, to the people who are alive, who, who are dead, um, because they are dead. Amen? Amen. They are, they, there is nothing they'll do for you. Do not provoke God. Do not. I went to a, um, I was invited to a um, relative's um, Catholic ceremony, I cannot believe, remember which one. 
I had to go, so I went. And uh, I was very confused. Yes, I used to be Catholic in, in, in the past, but that's, that is behind me. I was very confused. At some point, I heard them praying. So they have a list of people they, they pray to. And I think that list changes every uh, Sunday. And then they pray to, they pray to this uh, lady who was in India, Mother Teresa. Oh, Mother Teresa, pray for us. Huh? And, and then and the bench of other people. You, you know, I, I mean, that's really wrong. That's right. uh, where do you think Mother Teresa is? She is just waiting for Jesus to come back. All of us will have one day, a day, where it will be, okay, you come here. What did you do again? If we go through our life, Mother uh, Teresa, including, hallelujah, but when you have such belief, you're going to think about because your dad used to go to church every Sunday, so he becomes a saint. So if I'm in trouble or I'm looking for anything, I can pray to them, and then they, they will provide to me. That is not right. That is idolatry. That, that is sin. So let's be careful here. In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 14, uh, Jesus himself, who is God in flesh, I, I hope uh, we'll talk about Jesus more tomorrow. Amen? That's why I'm talking about Mary today. <laughs> Everyone with the, 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 the day. Amen. So Jesus, the Bible teaches us that God has existed eternally as one person, three, three persons in one. Hallelujah. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Remember that? Now, in, in this uh, uh, John uh, 17, uh, this is why Jesus is at the same time both God and still pray to God. Amen? He, he was God, but he prayed to God. Amen? Because while they share the same being, God, they are still different. It's three different personalities in one person. When Jesus is Jesus as a person here, he can still pray to God, even though he is God. Amen. Now, the book of John, chapter 16, verse 23 to 24 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give you. Until now... You have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. This is Jesus teaching us how to pray. Jesus did not say, pray to, my, to Mary. Amen? So that's my point. I'm trying to explain very well from my understanding and the help of the Holy Spirit who Mary is and what we should be doing. So Jesus is saying, pray to God in my name. Amen? The book of John, chapter 14, verse 13 to 14 says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. So over and over we see that Jesus is talking is teaching us how to pray. Pray, ask, pray to God in my name. Hallelujah. Amen? Yes. I can convince you a little more. The book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 17 says, the devils were powerless because of his name. Amen? Amen. Book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17 says, the demons were cast out in his name. Acts chapter 3, verse 6, healing occurred in his name. Yes. Romans chapter 10 says, salvation comes in his name. First book of Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 says, we are justified in his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says, everything we do and say is done in his name. Hallelujah. It is important to go through uh, th these facts, so you are equipped, yes. so you can fight back, 
so you can understand where our faith stands. Hallelujah. Our power does not come from what we heard. It comes from what we, we let in, in us. Amen. Hallelujah. It's important we get educated. If you, you are not educated, you will fall into the trap of idolatry. Amen. So who is Mary? Amen. We have learned how to pray. Do not pray to Mary. Pray to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, based on customs and history and everything I said before, Mary was probably 14 or 16 years of age when she got pregnant. Amen? When you read what Mary said when she met with uh, Angel Gabriel, you understand right away that Mary was educated, maybe even very educated in the things of God. Because as soon as Gabriel uh, spoke, Mary said, my soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced uh, in God, my, my, my Savior. Those are the things that are, find, are found in the Old Testament. You cannot learn them by staying home. You learn them by going to the synagogue. So she was definitely used to go to the synagogue, and she learned, and she knew. Hallelujah. So if Mary learned enough, she knew that the Messiah will come one day. So she knew a lot about what will happen when the Messiah comes. That's the reason she started quoting the Bible, verse after verse after verse, everything very coherent for a person who stays home. But she was very educated. Hallelujah. So this is, was not a coincidence. For me, it's a proof that she was educated. She knew what she was saying. This means that God did not pick any random girl. Hallelujah. God did not just pick someone to be the mother of Jesus. A amen? amen. Mary, Mary was not, not nobody. Amen. God picked someone whose mind, body, and spirit was in it, was in the word, and was waiting for the coming of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Mary, regardless of all the knowledge and everything, once Gabriel says, you will have a baby, definitely for sure, probably she did not know the details how the Messiah will, will appear. And then she says, huh, how come? Without a man? Eh? It's not possible. Without knowing a man, how can I have a child? Brothers and sisters, God can do everything he wants. Amen? Amen. Remember uh, Adam. Who is Adam's mom? Hmm? Or oh, Eve. God can do everything from nothing. Do we agree on that? Amen? Amen. So now if we have Jesus without a dad, is that a surprise here? No. But Mary was concerned because she knows how things go. And then she said, hmm, how can I be pregnant and I don't have a man? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But once the angel explained this is coming from God, she remembered everything she had been taught. And then she said, yes, sir, I'm ready for the jury. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, that's what my brother was saying this morning. You hear, you do this, you do that. But what do you really do? That means you have heard, you got the knowledge. That means there is something you have to do. It's a challenge not only for, for me, but it's a challenge for everyone. Hallelujah. Mary said, I'm ready for the jury because I have understood. But by saying that, she opens now the door to mockeries, rumors. Just understand that this lady has been married 
maybe at that time you stay in this room or in this home and you do not live, I'm not sure, but it could be that, right? And then she's pregnant. we never seen any men around here. Joseph, we always keep an eye on you. But what's going on here? So this opens the door to mockeries, slanders, and rumors, and rumors, and everything you can imagine. Hallelujah. Amen. But from what we just read, we understand that Mary knew very well that Jesus was going to reign forever. We just read it, verse 32. She also knew that her son will be called Son of God. I don't know if you understand the responsibility. For years and years, you're going to the teaching by talking about the Messiah. Messiah will come, Messiah will come. And now, you're the one, actually, who is going to carry the Messiah. This is a huge responsibility. And she's 14, 15, maybe, maybe 16. Hallelujah. Plus, she's in a very difficult situation. She's already married to a person that she's wearing a certain time to go live with. And then she will find pregnant. Some people will understand uh, that, you know, it's a miracle. But some other people, you can sing until you turn blue. They will not understand your story. What angel? What supernatural? They will not understand that. The proof is, when Jesus came, until now, some people haven't understood that yet. Eh? She, he was rejected, killed. Among the people where Mary was living. Hallelujah. Sometimes it, it, you need the grace of God to be able to understand certain things. Amen. Amen. Mary knew all of that, knew that the son will be um, called the son of God, but she also knew that herself, she needed a savior. And herself, she knew that the savior will die for her as well. That's the reason I'm talking about this, just to remove confusion in our mind uh, by listening things we listen to left and right. But we learn now that Mary was really a model of obedience. She did not discuss, she did not say anything because of the knowledge she had. So Mary is Jesus' mother, humanly speaking. Amen? Amen. 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 Why do I say that? Because, because I said before that Mary was not the mother of God. Because God existed before Mary existed. I'm not sure if you're understanding my point here. Amen? Jesus existed from the beginning of everything. Now, if you are my mother, so you have to exist before me. Which means you are not the mother of God, but you are mother of Jesus. Amen? Jesus, the man. Amen? Amen. One day, Jesus was preaching... And then one mother was really touched. And then she wanted to say something really powerful, talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And then she started saying something that is a false doctrine that pushed people to venerate Mary. Jesus rebuked that woman right there. In the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 27, a woman said, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast which you have sucked. Jesus immediately reacted and said, blessed is the man and the woman that hear the word of God and believe it and keep it. Hallelujah. You understand what is important here. In conclusion of all the facts that I've been giving you, from the beginning, Mary knew the baby she will carry will be a savior. She was told, she was taught even before being told. Mary knew that she will be used as a carrier, as a vehicle for Jesus to be born. Amen? Mary knew that her was not God, but she knew that 
her baby was actually God. Amen. Amen. Mary never asked to be prayed to. Mary cannot forgive anybody's sins and cannot intercede for anyone. I hope that's clear this morning. So in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 48, one day Jesus went missing. He was still young. I think he was around 12. You know, the boys, they, you know, they like going all over the place. So Mary was in panic mode. Where is Jesus? Where is my boy? They looked for him everywhere. They could not find him. Finally, they found him somewhere. So Mary was not happy. Jesus was in a synagogue teaching, doing things that Mary did not even believe. So Mary asked Jesus, why are you treating us like this? Why can you just go disappear? We don't know where you are. We are in panic here. I was about to call 911. I thought you were kidnapped. Amen. Amen. What's wrong with you? Eh, it's not safe to be out there by yourself. Amen. Amen. I'm pretty sure the family came to, to grab him and bring him home and maybe give him a time out or something. <laughs> but Jesus, at that time, looked at her mother because people were saying, oh, your, your mom is looking for you. And then Jesus looked at her and said, okay, my mom, my, my, my brothers and sisters, because they came, the entire family came to look for him. And Jesus said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he pointed to the people who were there. Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So that was the time that Jesus clarified that relationship. It was time now to move from a human person to the spiritual person. And it was time for Mary to know that and everyone else to understand that. Yes, you are my mother, but you are not my mother. And you guys are now my brothers and sisters. Amen? So understand all of this in a in, in another dimension. Amen? Amen. Mary is a demonstration that God desires to use the ordinary to bring something that is extraordinary. Mary was ordinary, was a poor lady, a young lady from a village. Ordinary. But God has that power to take what is ordinary and bring something that is extraordinary. A poor lady with nothing was chosen. I don't know if you understand that. I'm not sure if she was the most beautiful in the village. I'm pretty sure her parents were poor. But she was chosen to fulfill a destiny. This is a person who was not known. She never traveled. I mean, she went to Egypt, but that's as far as she was able to do. But she is the most loved woman of, of all time, if you think about it. Even in China, even in all the places you can imagine, people talk about her. So a poor lady with nothing was chosen by God to carry this. That is huge. Amen? I know the time we live to be famous. You have to collect so many likes eh, on Facebook. Guess what? Mary never collected even one like on Facebook. But yet, she's famous. She's known everywhere. Hallelujah. This is a hope for me, and this is a hope for you too. Hallelujah. God is the one who is able to bring light where it's all dark. Hallelujah. Do not give up. Do not be desperate. Amen? Amen. If there is no hope, don't worry. There was no hope for Mary, and her situation became even terrible after the news. But if there is no hope and you are desperate, God can change that. Actually, God did change that for Mary. 
The Bible says in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 27, Christ in you, your hope of glory. Amen. Amen. So you just take Christ in you to have glory. Hallelujah. It does not seem fame in you, your hope of glory. It says Christ in you, your hope of glory. It does not say money, your hope of glory. Now millions in your banks, your hope of glory. Or millions of likes or followers, eh? your hope of glory. Amen. It just say Christ and Christ alone is your hope of glory. I'm not saying don't go work, earn money. No, that's good. But your hope of glory is not in money or in peoples. It is in God. Amen. Amen. Mary, after reading everything, we learned from her that she was a humble person. So let's learn to be humble as well. Amen. Let's learn to study the word. We understand that she did study the word. She knew what she was talking about. She knew what she was going through. If you want to be ready to be used by God, it does take at least those two things beside the grace of God. You need to be humble. You need to study. You need to read the word so you understand. Amen? Amen? Amen. And I'm talking to everyone, following what the brother was talking this morning. If you're involved in any, anything, worship, dance ministry, um, ushering, whatever, be faithful, be humble. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if you're doing something you don't really like, do it like you're doing unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. No matter the circumstances. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yesterday I was here early in the morning in my office over there, and then there was a team that was working here, um, and then they were, they were really vocal. So I came out, and then I saw the custodian running all over the place. I said, brother, what's going on? Said, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I opened for the people. I'm, now I'm running. I need to take the um, business cards for the church and bring them where we are uh, doing a distribution of food. Because his wife was busy somewhere uh, giving uh, food to people for Christmas. And then he was here, and he remembered, oh, she needs the, the business cards. At least they know where we're coming from. So he was running. I said, okay, my, he's going to break something. Brothers and sisters, sometimes it takes that passion to what we're doing. When it comes to Jesus, demonstrate passion. It's very important. Be faithful, be humble. Hallelujah. Amen. I know when we're talking about this, you do not see the connection between Mary and yourself. Because today it's about Mary. But try to understand that no matter how poor you are, no matter your situation, your condition, where you're coming from, it could be a village or it could be a town, it could be an unknown place. God is able to locate you where you are. Hallelujah. And I, I'm praying right now, even right now, I pray that God locates you where you are. If you are an ordinary person and God is looking for something extraordinary, I pray that God locates you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that God locates all the women of CPF the same way he was able to locate Mary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mary was chosen. May God choose you as well. Amen. Hallelujah. May God, our Lord, be pleased with you, with what you do. Amen. Some of us will be known from generations to generations. Mary did not go to any university that we know. Mary did not write a book that we know of. But she is known from generation to generations. I am saying this morning, stay faithful. Yes. Jesus, your hope of glory. Yes. Brothers and sisters, I pray that you will be known from generations to generations. Yes. Hallelujah. God chose Mary despite of her situation. What is your situation? Single mom? With kids? Hmm? Some are hopeless? 
Some are jobless. Some are about to give up. Some live with disease. They will not go anywhere. You know this is part of myself. And then we become hopeless. Brothers and sisters, do not be hopeless. If you are here this morning in this church, I'm saying, do not be hopeless. Amen. Amen. Mary was probably hopeless. I do not know. But we see today that she was chosen. May God locate you and choose you as well. Amen. Amen. You are poor, you are unknown. Wait until God sends uh, Gabriel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. When you sleep, sleep just with an eye. Because God, Gabriel is coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Expect Gabriel to come. Amen. Mary was expecting Gabriel. All the ladies at that time probably knew the story. They were saying, maybe it's me. We don't know when Jesus will come, but if Jesus comes now, eh? Is Jesus going to look at you? That is my question. Mary was ready. Despite her condition and situation, if Jesus comes, he will locate me. Amen. So now I'm saying if Jesus comes today, because there will be a second coming, can he locate you? Hallelujah. Amen. Can he? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God has a plan for you. Do not worry. God had a plan for Mary and that plan was executed. And I'm saying God has a plan for you today. Hallelujah. My point, focus on him and him alone. If he has a plan, that plan will be executed. Amen. Amen. When you pray, you can ask him, God, what is your plan for me? What, what do you have for me? You can ask him too. Hallelujah. But I think the biggest problem is we see that when Mary was called, Mary followed immediately. But if God comes today, are you going to say, you lead, I will follow? We live in a time where no one can lead you. <laughs> Impossible. We live in a time where we think that money leads you. Because I have money, I don't need you. I don't need God. I don't need everything. But the people who are, lo who are going to be located are the people who are ready to say, you lead, I follow. You have a plan for me, praise the Lord. I'm ready for the task. Hallelujah. Amen. Know the word. Mary knew the word. Read the Bible. Know the word. Mary understood right away that Gabriel's story was not news for her. She had heard in the synagogue talking about the Messiah. So she knew that that was not a story. She was shocked that she was chosen. She lived in the word. She knew the word. She has heard people talking. She has heard prophets talking. She knew exactly the word. That is a difference with us. If God has a plan for you, if God has a mission for you, do you know the word? If an angel comes or if you dream about something, are you going to reject that thing or are you going to embrace it? What is the difference between you and the person who embraces right away? It's the expectation. You cannot expect something you do not know. So my encouragement for 2019 is read the word. Read the word, know the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know we had a long program, so I'm going to be short this morning. Most girls dream to have a child one day. They do not think too much about the responsibility that comes with having a child. Like we just learned, Mary was looking for Jesus all over the place because it was her responsibility to care, to, uh, to care about Jesus. So most uh, girls, they will dream having uh, children or a child, but they do not think too much about their responsibilities. And Luke chapter 1, verse 29, I think we read that. Mary was in shock. Mary was troubled. 
that she was the one that was chosen to have Jesus. She probably say, why me? Eh? Favored me? Oh my God. So among all these girls here, you found me. Among everyone, you could not find better than me. Brothers and sisters, I'm not talking to Mary, I'm talking to you. Amen. And I pray this morning, even though you don't think you are the most beautiful, or the most rich, or the most talented, may God find you and may God choose you. Amen. Among everything who are very smart, and you think you are not part of them, may God still choose you. Amen. This is very important. Otherwise, I wouldn't be preaching about this. Hallelujah. At this very moment, many people are celebrating Jesus all over the place. Some are Christians, as I said before, and some are not. Some even believe in Jesus, and some do not believe in Jesus. Some celebrate and don't celebrate. But everyone today has to understand the knowledge of the word makes the difference. If you see people celebrating and you are wondering what is happening, you have to have a backup. You have to have a knowledge of what is happening. The difference, made the, the, the difference of the knowledge of the word made the difference for Mary. When she was called, she was ready for the action immediately. Imagine two minutes that Mary did not care going to the synagogue, did not care reading the Bible, did not know anything. And Gabriel comes. Here is a person who physically came. Okay? So Gabriel came. What do you think will have happened? Mary could have given a hard time to Gabriel. Huh? What are you doing in my house? Who are you? What? No. And the plan, God could have been maybe pushed to change the plan, find someone else. Because the person that God was going to rely on does not want to hear anything. This is possible. As I said before, many people over there rejected Jesus. So Mary could have rejected Jesus as well. So the difference is in the knowledge. She knew and for sure, the grace of God was there too. So for this end of the year, for next year, I'm saying again, take the time to read at least one or two verses every day just to understand. And the Holy Spirit will talk to you. The Holy Spirit will minister to you. If you want God to, to give you promises, where do you think those promises are? In the Word. So if you don't read the word, you do not know the promises of God. At what are you going to pray? You pray the promises. So you have to know them. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Jesus is God. Jesus is not a baby somewhere in a manger on December 25th. Jesus is God. Tomorrow, I don't know who is preaching, but tomorrow we'll be explaining who is really Jesus. Amen? So that we are educated, so that we don't have a confusion in our mind. Amen? Amen? I know I did not talk much about Joseph because uh, I chose Mary, <laughs> but I'm going to talk a little bit about Joseph. Amen? Amen. Put yourself in Joseph's uh, uh, shoes. I just get married. I just give my ring to someone, and then she says she's pregnant. No way. No, you understand that um, you understand Joseph's struggle. You, you pr how, pregnant of what? A angel? No. So his problem was terrible. If a person is pregnant, people will see at certain point. You know, there is many things you can hide, but that one you cannot hide for a long time. So jo Joseph was struggling. What am I going to say? Maybe we should get rid of that child. I don't know. So certainly Joseph was struggling here. Even if it was God's plan, for in the eyes of so many people, 
It is not acceptable. No, not in that culture. No, no, no way. But God knew about that. God knew that Joseph would give a hard time to Mary, for sure. So God sent Gabriel to go see Joseph as well so that you know what is happening here. So God did the right thing for Joseph to cool down, to accept the situation, and to have Mary. Amen? I think I have said enough on Joseph. Am I right? (laughs) But you, you just have to understand that it's very difficult. Maybe Mary herself was saying, I'm going to be maybe repudiated. Um, this guy is going to take his ring back. And maybe they're going to stone me. Eh? In, 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 in that place, they stone people. Maybe they're going to stone Mary because she committed something she was not supposed to commit. But God was in charge. Brothers and sisters, no matter what you have been involved in, no matter how wrong we have done things, you can bring them to God. If God gets involved in your situation, in your problem, he will cleanse you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything will be gone Hallelujah. because God steps in. Amen. Even if a situation is complicated, difficult, give it to him. Amen. Amen. You have to understand that there was a contract between Mary and Joseph. And it's not a contract between just two people. It's two families. It does involve a lot of people because everyone is keeping an eye on those two. Okay? So it does involve everyone. And the contract was already signed, ratified. So if Mary gets pregnant, Joseph's reputation is ruined. It's ruined. So after all of that, once Joseph knew what was going on and everything, Mary decided to go visit a relative called Elizabeth. Elizabeth was Mary's relatives. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 7, talks about Elizabeth a little bit and says, Elizabeth and her husband, they had no children because Elizabeth was unable to become pregnant, and they both were very old. Remember what I told you? If the Bible says you are very old, that means you're old, (laughs) really old. I think he was almost 90. Um, And in the Old Testament, it's very clear if you read Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12 to 14, that the people who are not obedient to God will be barren. If a person does not have kids, it was a sign for them that this person was not obedient to God. But the Bible tells us that Elizabeth and her husband were very obedient to God. But yet, God did not bless them with a child. If I take you back to what we read in the beginning... When Gabriel told Mary, you are going to have a child, and that child will be called the the son of God. And then he told her immediately, even your relative Elizabeth is already six months old. He's already pregnant. This is shocking because she was old. Hallelujah. So this was too much for Mary. She needed to go see Elizabeth. She needs someone who is confident. At least Elizabeth will understand her. Both could say to each other, what is happening to us? Hey, what is happening to us? They shared some, something in common. Both were pregnant. And both were pregnant while they were not supposed to be. Amen? Amen. Remember, Elizabeth was very old. Not supposed to be pregnant. She has passed the time to be pregnant like twice. Amen? Amen. Mary was very, very young, with no husband, no contact with anybody. And then she was pregnant as well. 
she was not to be, supposed to be pregnant. So two people who are not supposed to be pregnant definitely needed to be together. Amen. And Mary comes to Elizabeth. Mary has the news that Elizabeth is six months pregnant. But we do not know if Elizabeth knew. Amen? But let me be more clear. She did not know. You are 90 years old almost, never been pregnant. Maybe you have no clue what is happening. Am I right? Amen. So Mary gets there, and she greets Elizabeth. When she greets Elizabeth, the baby in the womb of Elizabeth jumps. Hallelujah. Ah, you did not get that. Elizabeth was old, and Elizabeth was pregnant, six months pregnant. She did not know she was pregnant. It looks like whatever she carried was not alive because she had no sign that there was a baby in me and that the baby was alive. I never gave birth, but I know that it takes nine months for a baby to be born. Hallelujah. So six, we're getting there. By six, you should know something. By six, you should feel something in you. Well, Mary is carrying as well a baby. But Mary is carrying the Son of God. So when Mary goes somewhere, it's the presence of God that is going somewhere. Right. Hallelujah. It is the presence of God. When Mary says hi to Elizabeth, hallelujah, when you are in the presence of, the, of God, what is dead becomes alive. The baby that was like dead jumps. And for the first time, Elizabeth realized, huh, I am pregnant. And whatever I'm pregnant with is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means what Mary carried in her was bigger than anything anybody could think about. John, John the Baptist, which is my name, by the way. John the Baptist has no choice than to manifest himself. The presence of God was so intense that John could not stay silent. In the presence of the Lord, what is dead comes alive. In the presence of the Lord, what is silent talks, comes alive. Hallelujah. Amen. We have one lady here who was waiting for a child. She had one child, and then for four years, she has been praying, praying, praying for a child. As I said last Sunday, following Elijah's prayer, we have to be precise when you're asking God for something. So this lady was precise. She asked God for a daughter. I have a son. I want a daughter. That's the desire of my heart. But there was no sign of any daughter, not even another son, nothing, no sign, nothing, zero. Four years. She was waiting, praying, believing, nothing. She went to the doctors. Doctors said, you're fine, you have no problem. But still, there was no baby. She did not lose hope. The delay that she was experiencing did not take a toll on her patience. She remained patient. And she kept talking about it. She kept praying about it. She kept believing about it. There was an expectation. One day, I'm talking about a true story, OK? One day in June this year, the year of Grace Revolution, she came to Frontline. And at that time, Pastor Kofi was teaching on let the dry bones hear the word. There is a time where 
you have to bring all the, the dry bones to hear the word. Because the word will revive what is dead. We see here, John the Baptist was like dead. But when John the Baptist was in contact with the, the presence of the Lord, immediately there was a sign of life. Brothers and sisters, as Minister Aline said to me, my miracle happened in June when I heard that the dry bones must hear the word. Today, she's expecting a daughter. Hallelujah. After four years, this is God's timing. Four years, we can say that she had a moment of doubt, moment of questioning, moment of anxiety, moment of discouragement. But her eyes were fixed on God. I want a daughter. And if every prayer was about her daughter until the dry bones came to life just because of the word that was said here on a Friday evening during front line. Hallelujah. Amen. God responded to her prayer and they are sitting right there and they are waiting for their baby girl. Amen. I'm talking to all of you. You may be here, and then actually you're carrying something that you believe is already dead. I do not know what that thing is. It could be a dream for a dream house, a dream job, a dream husband, or a dream wife. But that dream is kind of dead. You have prayed maybe for a year or two. I'm not asking you to, to, to give up. And I'm not saying that you still have two more years to go. God is sovereign. When he decides it's today, it's today. Regardless of how long you have been waiting. I'm talking to everyone. I don't know how long you have been waiting for a baby. It is possible. Maybe it takes you to bring all the dry bones here to hear the word so the word can revive them. Brothers and sisters, the presence of the Lord gave life to John. The presence of the Lord gave life to this baby girl we are all waiting for. The presence of the Lord is here. It's here in this place. If you have anything that is dead, anything, bring it here. Bring it here. It could be on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I don't care. Bring it in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to pray for the dry bones to come alive. Amen. We're going to pray for whatever is dead to come to life. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, I'm asking God to use me the same way he used Gabriel when he was, Gabriel was talking to Mary. Hallelujah. And to be able to speak life to whatever is dead. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're carrying something and you're sure this is dead. I have given up on this project. This business, I am closing it. It's dead. Brothers and sisters, it is not dead yet. Hallelujah. Because the presence of, of God is here. Hallelujah. Amen. While I'm talking, I want you to visualize what is in you that is dead. And then I'm asking you, can you hear those kicking? The baby kicking. Can you hear that? Hallelujah. If you don't hear, nothing will happen. But if you hear, you connect to that. You tap into that. Uh, Lynn was able to do that. And then those baby kickings, today we're talking about a baby in a few months. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to tell you one thing that was said here by the angel that God sent to Mary. The angel said this. No word that comes from God we never fail. Amen. 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 Oh, my brothers and sisters. No word that comes from God, we never fail. Amen. Which means, with God, absolutely nothing is impossible. Amen? Amen? If God has started with you something, if you have a promise from God, that promise will come to pass. 
Hallelujah. Even if that promise is a baby, the baby is coming from some people. Hallelujah. Amen? I don't know. Maybe it's a business. You have dreamed about a business. You worked on a business, and nothing is happening. You're considering closing everything. Hallelujah. I am saying the word of God does not go back void. What God has said does not fail. Am I preaching to someone who has a word in you is dying? I am bringing it to life. I am saying the word of God will not go back void. Uh Which means your business is coming to life. You believe it, you tap into it, and it will happen. Amen. You still thinking about getting married, but you're getting old. Let me proclaim that your spouse is coming as well. God is able, and God is here this morning, and is breathing in your direction. Hallelujah. You thought your, your, your thoughts are dead, your dreams are dead, but they are still alive. They are still alive. Hallelujah. God is on your side. And this morning, I am proclaiming no delays. Four years is too long. In four years, you have time to give up, to abandon, to, to remove the idea from you. But I'm praying this morning that God be with you, that God understand what you're going through, understand that the delay is killing you. Yes, you believe, but it's taking too long. If you're here, you can just close your eyes. Yes, Lord, it's taking too long. Hallelujah. Elizabeth waited her entire life to have a baby. We do have people here in this place who have been as well waiting their entire life to have a first child. I'm asking you, Lord, touch them. May your presence revive something in them that they believe is dead. At this point, I do not care about what doctors may have said. Hallelujah. I do not care. What is impossible, you can make it possible. What doctors are not able to do, you are able to do. I'm asking you, Lord, to touch them. Touch them mightily, Lord. Touch them right now in this place. Some people are closing down the business. I can see it in my spirit, Lord. If this idea was coming from you, if this is a dream that you have given them, Lord, fulfill what you have promised them, Lord. Your word will not go back void, hallelujah, in their life, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I praise your holy name this morning, Lord. I praise your holy name this morning, Lord. I magnify you this morning, Lord. And I say thank you. Thank you for all these months, hallelujah. With, we lived with expectations. We saw miracles, Lord. Immigration. The babies are coming after four years, hallelujah. Just because we prayed and we believed in you. We're still believing in you for so many other things, Lord. We are still believing in you. Elizabeth believed in you, and the baby came at her old age. Hallelujah. We're still believing in you. Everything we have, we put in your holy hands. Hallelujah. In your holy hands. And we ask you, Lord, to protect everyone here. Shield us with your presence. Shield us with your presence, Lord. Because the enemy is around, the enemy is attacking, trying to find the who the enemy will devour. Protect your children, hallelujah. Protect them at home. Protect them where they go, when they travel, at school, at work. Protect them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we all have dreams, but we cannot fulfill them. We don't want to fulfill them outside of your presence, hallelujah. I'm asking you, Lord, to touch every single person All dreams you have given us, Lord, will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Will come to pass in the name of Jesus. We recognize this morning we are not able, but you are able, hallelujah. We recognize this morning the impossibility of the situation. But there is nothing that is impossible to you. 
we presenting all these cases to you in the name of Jesus. Oh, let me proclaim success this morning. Let me proclaim fulfillment this morning, achievement this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I can see in my spirit achievement. I see in my spirit success. I see result in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Confuse our enemy. It was declared that we will fail, but we are not failing. We're moving forward. I declare success in what you're doing. I declare success. Oh, hallelujah. Help us, us manage the delay. Your time is now your, our time, Lord. Help us manage that. Help us manage that time, hallelujah. Help us. Help us, Lord. We glorify your holy name. And we say hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Let it be so. Amen. May God bless you abundantly. Tomorrow we have service in the evening. Amen. Wear red and white. And come have fun. You made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing